Module 2, Homer Simulations. Homer is a free software application developed by the National Renewable Energy Laboratory in the United States. This software application is used to design and evaluate technically and financially the options for off-grid and on-grid power systems for remote, standalone and distributed generation applications. It allows you to consider a large number of technology options to account for energy resources available and other variables. In the last few years, a large number of telecom operators and vendors have used Homer to dimension their green deployment. It is one of the best tools for micropower design and optimization. Homer was first developed in 1993 for an internal Department of Energy usage to understand the trade-offs between different energy production configurations. A few years after the original design, NREL made a version publicly available to serve the growing community of system designers interested in renewable energy. You will log on to www.homerenergy.com for details. There are two versions of Homer software available at the Homer Energy website, Homer 2 and Homer Legacy. Homer 2 is a paid version, whereas Homer Legacy is free. In this module, we will walk you through the Homer Legacy version. Once you learn how to use Homer, you can try to use Homer 2. Homer 2 has the same basic functionality with added features and wider variable adaptability. To download Homer Legacy, you have to click Download under the software banner of the page. At the bottom of Try Homer page, Click the Download Homer Legacy here. It will redirect you to a registration or login page. If you are not an existing user, you will have to register first. The registration process is simple and straightforward. Once you are registered, go to Download Homer Software and look for Homer Legacy at the bottom of the page. Click Download to download the installer. Please bear in mind, you have to do this process individually. You cannot download the file and share it with someone else on another PC. Once downloaded and installed, the software is now ready to use. Once you open up your Homer software, it will look like this. There are six steps to get a result. Step one, defining expected power system. Step two, defining site load. Step three, defining individual component with e equipment dimension to be considered. Step four, define natural sources for wind and solar. Step five, economics. And step six, calculate, analyze, and compare. Let's get started. In step one, you have to define your expected power system. Click Add, Remove from the Equipment to Consider section. Now you will see this window with a list of equipment. From the list, you have to pick your expected solution. You have to primary go, primarily go with your observation and ground findings. If you have a target to deploy a solar solution, you can directly go to solar and solar related equipment. If you have a target to deploy wind or fuel cell solutions, you can go directly to picking up that equipment only. If you are unsure, you can pick all the solutions and look for the correct combination. Other than green power dimensioning, this section can also be used for DG battery hybrid dimensioning as well by picking the generator and battery only options. Now to explain more fully, let's take a site example and use that example throughout the training module. Let's consider a site with one kilowatt DC load. 
and let's consider we want to deploy a solar solution for this site. From this window, we have to pick the load and components. From load, select primary load one. From components, select PV and battery. If you want to keep a secondary power generator like DG, you should pick generator and converter from the list. Please make sure to check do not model grid for a certain alone site. Click OK. Now in the left hand side of the window under equipment to consider, you will find the items you picked in the window earlier. The items are not in an ACDC category and are not connected. You now have to define individual components with details following step 2 and step 3. In step 2, you will define the site load. Click on primary load 1. It will bring you to this window. You have to give it a label, that is the site name, define load type, that is AC or DC, and select baseline data. The baseline data can be a mix of different months and days or can be generic data. Let's consider that it is generic data. Let's change the label to site load and select DC from load type. Let's keep month and day of the baseline data the same. We now have to put hourly load requirements from 0 hours to 2400 hours. If we have any specific load information for different hours, we can create a better load profile. Otherwise, we will use a generic 1 kilowatt load for all hours. Set random variability and step time to step time at 5%. Usually, the power requirement variable is not very significant unless some exceptions are happening. This is a manual way of setting the baseline data. If you have any ready data sheets available in .dmd format, you can input the data and use directly. Press OK once you are done. You now can see, after configuring the primary load, the site load part is now shown connected with an arrow with DC. Now moving to step 3, where you have to define all other components. Start with PV. Once you click on it, it will bring you to another configuration window. The cost and size to consider should be defined first. Take the market rate and put it here. Let's consider $500 for a 250 WP panel. In sizes to consider, you have to consider the maximum PV footprint that you can entertain for this site, considering you may have issues with land availability. Set output current, lifetime and the redating factor as well. Following the same principle, we also have to configure the battery, generator and converter. For the battery, there is a list of batteries pre-installed with Homer software. Your preferred battery may not be on the list. However, you can pick any of the batteries and click details to view the performance of it. You can also create your own battery pro profile that has been supplied by your battery supplier. Please make sure you enter the correct battery specification in order for Homer to simulate accurately and return better results.
Once the configurations are done, you will see the items are now connected by an arrow to the near DC or AC line. You now have to move to the fourth step of defining natural resources. Click Solar Resource at the resource part. The beauty of Homer is you can directly pull resources about solar data from the NASA database if you put the correct latitude and longitude of the site and its time zone. Let's consider the site is located at 1 degree 15 minute north and 40 degree 38 minute east at GMT plus 3 time zone. Click Get Data Available via Internet and it will put the relevant solar radiation data. Before moving to the fifth step of economics, we have to define the diesel price in the diesel tab under the resource section. Take the current diesel delivered price per litre at your location. The final step of data inputting is step five. You have to put some of the economics or financial data. For instance, interest rate, project lifetime, system fixed capital, or operational and maintenance costs per year. Please take the right figure and input here. Many of the costs may not be included while defining the individual components. Those costs, where capex or opex should be reflecting here. Press OK and you are done. The initial configuration is complete. We now have to calculate some other pieces. This is in phase six. Please hit the calculate button. The system now will simulate for all possible options and bring the values in an order. Once you have all of the results, you have to develop your skill to analyze the results and pick the best one for you.